What's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my recap review for Married to Medicine, Married to Medicine Season 5, Episode 1, Waiting to Exhale. I think I might be talking about this more than I did the house. Where I was like, so much shit happened, but I'm going to try to like get through it because it was a reintroduction. But it's, the episode was called Waiting to Exhale. It should have been Jackie is going to be our storyline this season. Like That's how the shit seen. So they open up with uh, talking about how Curtis had uh, stepped out on Jackie. I think I missed this in the blog because <laughs> I didn't catch this at all, but apparently he's been having an affair for a hot minute. And Jackie was kind of hoping that it, she would, like, shake it off. Um, I think the best way to explain it, I guess she kind of felt like she was dreaming almost and waiting for Curtis to call and, and say, hey, there's some things being said, but it's all false. Not necessarily the case. <clears throat> and she's most upset that, you know, she didn't have a break when it happened. Like, the shit broke off on the internet and she didn't have enough time to kind of like process it before people started blaming her. And one of the mess up things about social media, especially when you have a public, like, when all your shit's public and not private, is people can literally at you and say exactly how they feel. And everybody, or well, not everybody, but they show some tweets blocking out people's names, of course. And how they were blaming her for the demise of her marriage. So, to, so we start off. So that was kind of like the opener. Start off with Toya. She says that uh, they are pretty much being frugal. They paid off half of their debt, and <clears throat> Eugene is working extra shifts. Like he uh, has, like has a um, a gig where he has to travel four hours to work, and she's most upset. That he's going to be away. And initially I'm sitting there thinking like. Okay she's probably thinking that way. Because what happened with Jackie's marriage. That she thinks it might happen to her. And lo and behold she says exactly what I was thinking. That you know she thinks that he's going to step out. <clears throat> and he's just like. Nah that's not the case. I ain't finna step out. I'm not finna be up in the clubs. This that and the third. And you know even brings up the fact. That they're only having sex twice a month. I mean, I really don't know what the fuck to say, but again, I mean, y'all, you want him to pick up more shit that you mad that he's doing it. Hey, look, if it seems like, like it seems like it's been a year and they got half their debt paid off, give it one more year, y'all should be good, no problems, no issues. Moving on, Quad says that Dr. G has his uh, own practice, which is nice. It was actually nice to see her actually putting oil in her motherfucking conscience, you know, tip head off to her and all the good jazz. But uh, she pretty much says that uh, she had 10 days to kind of get his place up to work and whatnot. And they talk. And again, like I forgot to say, Toya brought up Jackie's situation. Now Quad brought up Jackie's situation. And <clears throat> I agree and disagree with what Dr. G says. Now Dr. G says it's up to Jackie to, up, it is up to Jackie to fix it. You know, in terms of forgiving him and everything else, I don't necessarily, I don't agree with that. But he does say that she has a part to play. Now, I do agree with that. In a relationship, you know, everybody has a part to play, you know. And sometimes it's acknowledging what it is that you did, even if it was something minute. Again, I'm not blaming Jackie. And I'll share a story about, you know, my friends and whatnot and how something kind of happened. And it kind of bridged some of this shit because I actually have to wait to the end. I should bring the story in. So heavy, Dr. Heavy, I call it Dr. Heavy. Uh, this is the first time that we, well, not first time, but we rarely see her mention, you know, the son or whatever. Briefly, I uh, show him um, he's going off to college and everything. And then she brings up Dr. Jackie to her husband. And she even said that when it happened, she fell out with her husband because she, you know, she kind of put herself into Jackie's situation. And. You know, he pretty much says that men and women are different. I ain't even gonna touch that because I don't even feel like opening up a can of worms on this motherfucking video. I'm, I'm only, he said it, I ain't say it. Um, but actually, I'm sorry, let me back up. Before he said that, when she initially brought up it, he was like, that's their business. And I was like, kudos to you, my brother, because it is their business. Because it's like, his whole thing is, that's their shit. Let them deal with their shit. Let us not be conversing about it. And I think that was his way of also saying, uh, the cameras are right here. You know, uh, I hear my mouth. 
you know, like, let's not talk about their situation while the camera's here. But, um, damn, I, I actually connect that shit together. But, I mean, it was pretty much it. And, you know, she pretty much uh, has said that if her husband was to cheat, even though she has vows with him, she coming after that bitch over there. So then we have uh, Dr. Simone, because I told got to separate those, but I see two houses. So they still have two houses. The South House is closer to this kid's school. The North House is, is closer to her job. And she's been staying at the South House, but it's been um, a whole lot of traffic. But from leaving there to have to get to work, this, that, and the third. Her son, Miles, is supposed to be going to Howard University. Congrats to that, uh, you know, the young brother. Uh, dating comes up, and she was kind of talking about being booed up. He was just like, no, nah, don't get booed up. You know, date. And Cecil and I, I think we kind of share the same ideals where when it comes to dating, just because you're dating somebody don't mean you're fucking them. You know what I'm saying? His whole thing is don't just buckle yourself down. You are young. <laughs> you're going to be in, like I say, you're going to be in college for at least four years. Like, date. You know what I'm saying? And then if you find somebody that, you know, you think might be the one, then go ahead and, you know, lock, but see Simone thing in life. So you just want her to be fucking. And he looking like, I ain't saying that. But, of course, that's where her mind is. And we'll see this conversation come up later in the season, obviously. All right. So, Dr. Heavy, her son is away. Uh, and he's only an hour away. But she's upset that he's not coming home every weekend. And, I mean, I kind of understand. Because when I was uh, back in Chicago, I went to St. Xavier University, which, you know, a bus and two trains, I think, Give or take an hour, hour and a half from home, but I didn't, I didn't go home every. I rarely went home, and it was one of those ways. Like I'm away, I'm gonna stay away. But if I need to get back home, I knew that I could because I was close enough. So I feel it. Her daughter has finished her song called, um, has finished writing her song, and it's called "I'm Not Perfect," inspired by her mother. And I'm gonna say this: I know we ain't supposed to talk about kids, but look, real talk. I would have been popped this little girl in her damn mouth. I didn't fucking lie, okay, because she is too old for her britches, I and even Dr. Heavy said that, you know, she's a little bit too old, and, you know, I think some was said, and, you know, uh, Dr. Heavy was like, well, I guess we both know, and then she's like, yeah, we both know, and it was, so, and it's just like, the way she talks so much, so much attitude, and again, this is Heavy's fault, because she's allowed her daughter to be this vocal now, let me, here's the thing, I'm very vocal. I, anybody that's ever met my mother and met me will say y'all are two peas in a pod. Growing up, I've always been outspoken, but guess what? I wasn't outspoken with her because I knew she would have said, look, look, I grew up during it. Like, I'm pretty sure we all grew up during the time where, you know, you, a child stays in the child's place. She ain't learned that. And I'm telling you, if, if she was my mother's daughter, she, oh Lord, she, she, <laughs> <laughs> would have got popped in the mouth right quick. That's all I'm saying. That girl need one good old, good old, old fashioned ass woman. That's all I'm saying. So Quad and Toy, they meet up at a bar, um, and they're in a good place. That's good shit. Quad talks to her about Dr. G and everything, and then the whole baby situation comes up, and Quad's just like, pretty much, I do everything, I even take out the garbage, like, I do everything, so I guess what she's trying to say, and I don't think this is necessarily the reason, but I think this is one of those reasons that she's using to validate not having kids, but I think what she's trying to get is with him being a doctor, and it's kind of what Curtis was saying to Jackie, I'm not validating his shit either, but, you know, with you being a doctor, you're going to be away, which, who's going to take care of the baby, of course, it's going to be me, but what are you going to contribute? So I think that's kind of what she's getting at. And of course, Quad is a business woman, so Quad is not trying to be tied down with it with a child right now either. But there have been many women to show that you can actually do both. So Toya then goes on to say that uh, you know, she brings up her bedroom issues. I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking about, you know, sex life to even my friend. I ain't even talking about that. But she brings that up, and then Quad threw the most shade talk about. So I guess, uh, you know, because she pretty much saying, okay, well, getting it twice a month, I guess checks ain't the only thing coming on the first and the fifteenth. I was like, you know what, Quad, I ain't, I ain't doing this shit with you today. 
But that shit was funny though. I ain't even feel like. And if y'all see me doing this, like, real quick tangent, I have to double do my videos now because uh, our movie exports it as a MOV file and not an MP4. And if I try to upload an MOV file to YouTube, it's gonna take over two hours. So I gotta sit here and take that file, put it in Camtasia, and then resave it as an MP4, which takes about a good ten minutes. So what I try to upload to YouTube. It's going to take less time. So if y'all wondering what my black ass is doing, that's what I'm doing. So I don't want y'all to think that I'm ignoring y'all, but I'm trying to sit here and you feel what I'm saying? Do a whole lot in just a little time. Because like I said, right now it's uh, 646. The sun about to come up and, you know, shit, I got to hurry and get my day started. So I'm multitasking right now. So then the girls bring up Jackie, which again, I'm telling you, this is the Jackie show. And I'm not, I'm not really here for it because it's just like. Why is everybody bringing up Jackie? You know, I got it. She has a situation, but I feel that it's fucked up because it's almost like their storyline is dependent upon hers and all like it. But Toya feels that Jackie needs to pull back when it comes to work. Now, here's what I'm going to say. I see where she's coming from, but let's all be real. Oh, ain't this about some shit? Now, look, I just I didn't just sat here and tried to transfer the video to YouTube, right? Now this shit's saying again it's gonna take two it's gonna take over two hours. Ain't this about some shit? Fuck it. I don't care. I don't care. Anyway. <laughs> uh she feels she needs to pull back when it comes to work. But here's what I wanna say. Even though that may be true, your job is your job, your career is your career. And if that's what's bringing food to the table, that's what's bringing food to the table. And I mean, I'm just saying, I don't like I'm not saying Curtis ain't got no money, but it seems like Jackie is is the breadwinner. But the reality is when you get with somebody and you know what they do for a living, you can't turn around and be mad that they not spend the time because when you got with them, you knew like, OK, they have a job that is demanding, which is going to take them away from me. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't really agree with uh, with uh, Toy on that, because even with what I do for a living, you know, when I finally get into a relationship i mean she needs to understand that i work a lot like i'm up early right now but like with what i'm doing right now i'm gonna be in the fucking woods for a week and a half to two weeks every month damn near and even with that that shit i gotta do beforehand after which means when i come home i'm probably gonna be tired and probably not gonna have time to do it you know what i'm saying so it's one of which it's like it has to be understood but toya ain't never really worked so she don't understand she works something else, but I'm going to let y'all fill in the blanks. So, Dr. Heavy has is uh, doing his Waiting to Excel party for Jackie. The side of the, of the episode is Waiting to Excel. And Heavy uh, brought over some guys. I think she brought four or five to kind of pamper the women. I don't want to lose my place. Now, I'm going to say this. <clears throat> this scene is going to come up in the reunion. And I'm pretty sure uh, Heavy's husband is going to have an issue with this damn scene. Maybe the other women too, but wait, just wait and see. Uh, Toya said the guys need to be old up. This girl had lotion in her purse. And I forget who it was that said it, but somebody was like, Toya always got some of the person. They even did the flashback to last season when uh, she pulled the Patron out of her purse. And right quick, where the fuck is Janice? Like, I'm tired of showing flashbacks of Janice and she ain't here, but, but that's not here nor there. Um, Jackie arrives and asks if it's a bachelorette party and I thought she wasn't going to come in but she comes in <clears throat> and you know they start uh, like the guys like one guy picked Jackie up now Jackie's wearing all white did y'all get done having lotion in your hands putting the soap so y'all so y'all standing in her white you know dress pick up sit down massaging her but they still got their hands on I'm like damn she gonna have to get rid of that motherfucking dress <laughs> that's the only thing that I thought about but you can see the discomfort in her face. Not that she wasn't comfortable with what was going on, but I think that she was just like, uh, you know, I guess it was just like overload. So she asked the guys to kind of like excuse themselves while she talks to her friends and Toya pops it off. And everybody looked like, damn it, Toya, because she was pretty much the same. You gave your husband permission. And who was it? Was, and Quad jumps in and says, da, 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 da. No, what she said is, paraphrasing, if I am not making you happy, then I hope that you can find somebody that will 
Meaning that if you are not being fulfilled in this relationship, let me know. We can go ahead and cut it. And then you go ahead and be happy. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and free yourself. But don't sit here and cheat. That's what she was saying. Don't cheat. And what, but even before I finish, what really fucked me up with this is if this was for Jackie and they wanted her to open up, they kept putting themselves in her situation where it should have just been, you know what, Jackie, just release. Get it out because it seems like she really hasn't had a, t- had a chance to verbalize it. I think she probably did with Dr. Simone because they're like this, or I should say like this. So Quaz says that uh, the sp- like with physicians, more often than not, the spouses are going to come second. And Heavy, Dr. Heavy disagrees. And Toys is like, well, it's my job to be his everything. And <laughs> Jackie had that confessional read, baby, which is like, well, when your husband sits here and gives you everything, then, of course, it's your job to say and take care of him because he is your everything and is giving you everything. I'm like, you know what, Jackie? <laughs> Don't fuck with Jackie. I wish Jackie would have said it in that moment. Cause, ooh, that would have been that, that would have been a two piece of the biscuit right there. That would have been a five dollar fill up box on that ass. So Quas pretty much said, if that's her, it's one and done. You cheat on me, that's it. You feel what I'm saying? And I mean, not to be mean or whatever. Pretty I, I, if her saying it, either A, there's not a prenup in place. B, there's probably a clause in the prenup that if you cheat, I get it. But I mean, hey, I don't. I really don't know. I really don't know how to feel about that. Y'all, let me know how y'all feel about Quad and how she's because it was something behind it. I swear it's something that's there that she didn't, you know, mention. And Toya says that, well, my situation is different because I have kids, and am I the only one that felt like that was kind of a stinger to Jackie? Because we all know that Jackie won't kid, and I and I got it. You don't. You shouldn't <clears throat> have to necessarily pussyfoot around shit when it comes to friends but if y'all know that she going i i just i thought that what well, we call a tacky toy for a reason but i think that was real tacky and shit uh, dr heavy says if daddy cheated it wasn't his fault it was that bitch's fault because you know she refused to believe that daddy didn't cheat it i'm like all right um i wrote down it's all about jack because again it seemed like they were taking it away from her and put themselves in and if you've ever gone through something and you're with your friends trying to open it up and rather than them allowing you to talk, they make it all about themselves. That's sh- like it, it, it hurts and it makes it very difficult to talk. And I don't know about y'all, but I've been in a situation where it's just like, I don't even want to talk about this shit no more. Or y'all ain't the group that I want to talk about it to because y'all making it about yourselves when I'm the one that's going through it right now. So Jackie says, until you have walked in my, until you have walked, not in, in my shoes, but in these shoes, you don't know what you're going to do in that situation. And now this is when I have my little rabbit hole right quick. Like I have <clears throat> friends. I actually have a, a actually I consider a boy to be, to be my brother. Like I said, I mean, we close in a motherfucker, but you know, like I said, back when he was still serving, you know, chilling, kicking and whatnot. And he was telling me how there's issues in their marriage. And way, way back when I said, shit, you, if, if shit, my girl cheats, that's it. That's it. You know, because like I said, infidelity, I'm not doing it. But to kind of see how shit went with them, it made me kind of be like, mm, maybe not. Because they have been together, I think, somewhere between 10 to 15 years. And it's just like, do you really throw all of that away? Now, the issue with them is... She was just communicating with another guy, still cheating, but communicating with another guy. But she did that because he, like I said, we worked a lot when we was in Alabama. We worked a lot. I mean, it was crazy. So he would get home and he would get on the computer and he would start playing, you know, little, you know, games online. And he would be conversing with a female, too. But it was in reference to the game. She was and I even had to tell him just like. What's going on? He told me that she had been talking to another dude and, I'm, and they kind of made it worry. And I'm like, even though she's wrong, you do have to accept the fact that you helped create this. And he was like, how? It's like you work all day, come home and rather than spend time with her, you're on a computer and then you converse with somebody else and you're leaving her off to her own devices. Granted, what she did is wrong and what she's doing is wrong. 
but you cannot sit here and pretend as if you have not contributed to the situation. And then I was standing over there with them one weekend. And when I say I saw shit blow the fuck up, I was like, holy fucking shit balls. And I even went to come for her and she's just like, you don't have to. I'm just like, no, nah, no. Nah. Even though I'm friends with your husband, like I see that you're hurting and it was like trying to help them mend the fences. Cause I'm just like, what in the hell is going on? And even in watching it, you know, a lot of stuff happened, but they were able to repair, rebuild that helped them bring God into the right into the marriage. Cause God was never really in the marriage and they're thriving right now. But just in watching it, it really made me second guess. Cause I even said, off like, I would never ever sit here and try to make some shit work with a motherfucker that felt that you needed to cheat on me. You know what I'm saying? So I get what Jackie is saying. And Quad asked if she was staying. So she was like, so are you going to stay in your marriage? She was like, if you ask me in 10 minutes, I'll probably say yes. If you ask me in 20 minutes, I'm probably going to say no. Because it's just like she doesn't know. And she, and again, I think that that wound is still super, super fresh. So she really doesn't know. And Jackie uh, says that the one thing that she has learned in all this is, you know, to to never stop loving the person. That's deep. I ain't there, but that's deep. And then Dr. Heavy gives everybody a 5-5 t-shirt, you know, and it pretty much ends from there, which I was like, damn. And I feel so bad for Jackie. Not only is her marriage on display, it seems as if everybody's storyline is going to revolve around that. And it kind of sucks when, I guess, you're the role model for everybody. And because they see the role model going through so much, it's like that's going to sit here like that spirit of division is going to sit here and enter their relationships. And you're going to see a lot of that shit play itself out. And I think the little couples retreat that they do every year, man, I think shit going to get real. And I think that's the beautiful thing about marriage and medicine is unlike the households of Atlanta where they have to. It's like they're fishing for storylines. They do the same exact shit. We're not going to pretend like they don't, but their marriages are literally on display and it's real shit. So. All right, this was just a little bit long, but not that much. So that's all I got. That's all I got for this introduction. It seemed like Married to Medicine will be more lit than uh, the Real Households of Atlanta. But y'all let me know how y'all feel. I'm going to edit this video because now the uh, uh, Real Housewives is sitting at an hour 56 minutes. So it'll pretty much. So pretty much by the time I leave for work, that one should be uploaded. This one shortly thereafter. But as I'm getting ready. Actually, going to sit here and watch everybody else's review because I want to get mine out. Well, I want to do mine first before I watch everybody else's. So that's it. That's all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, you might get love hip hop tomorrow. Maybe, maybe not. If not, whatever videos I don't do, you'll get it either right before Thanksgiving or during that weekend. So again, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. See you guys on the next video. Peace.